Hello everyone. My name is Xiaomi, and you can call me Natalie. Today, I am going to introduce our work Linsyn, which is a hybrid fuzzing tool that employs constraint defaulting method to reduce constraints and increase the efficiency of concrete execution. This work is done while my visit to FUSAC, and the paper is a cooperative work with Sanjay Ravat, who is now an assistant professor in University of Bristol, and Cristiano Giofrida and Herbert Bose of FUSAC. So the highlights of our work Linsyn is that on average, it outperforms a state-of-the-art binary-only concrete execution tool, QSIM, in code coverage and solves more constraints than existing concrete executors like Triton and QSIM. And LSIM also finds bugs much faster than QSIM and found 17 new bugs in five real-world applications. So the presentation is divided into six parts, as you can see in the overview. We will firstly introduce the basic knowledge and background of this topic. So firstly, let's see the introduction part. We know that hybrid fuzzer is basically the combination of fuzzing and conflict execution. The fuzzing part generates bulk of inputs that come from easy-to-solve branches and explore shallow coverage, well, the calculated execution explores hard to solve branches and tries to go deeper into the execution path. The fuzzing provides candidate inputs that selected branches for calculated execution to flip. Thus, the calculated execution can solve the branches and generate new coverage to synchronize with the fuzzer. So, in theory, calculated execution can greatly improve the fuzzing performance on, on coverage. However, in practice, Concrete execution skewed poorly because of two reasons. One is path explosion, which has been extensively studied in the past and well improved. The other is constant bloat, which means the concrete execution has to solve many complicated and unnecessary constraints. In this paper, we mainly focus on the second problem, constant bloat, and try to reduce the large number of constraints that overwhelm the solver's computational and the memory capacities. So, what are the challenges of complex execution? Uh, after some observation and analysis, we found out that there are two main causes of constant bloat. One is by modeling system calls, uh, and the other is by irrelevant branches. So we will uh, use a simple example as shown on the right side of the screen to show how these two causes influence the efficiency of concrete execution by introducing constraint bloat. So for the first cause, constraint bloat introduced by modeling system calls. Uh, concrete execution always starts with symbolizing the program input as shown in the red square. Normally, binary-only solutions symbolize input bytes by hooking system calls for file operations such as open, read, and nmap. While convenient system call hooking introduces additional constraints, which in turn lead to additional overhead for the solver. This is because in the source code, the program uses a glibc function like fopen and fread to process the input file and to get access to target string from the input file, fopen uh, needs to copy the file descriptor returned by the open syscall to the address of the I.O. buffer that implements the file struct. Next, fread uses a pointer in this structure to check which offset in input file buffer should be accessed and copied into an intermediate buffer. So there are uh, these are all very complex operations, and with symbolization at the system call level, such intermediate operations increase both the emulation time and the number of constraints as the input file grows in size. This additional mass of not very interesting constraints influences the efficiency of complex execution to some certain extent. Um, for the second cause, constraint bloat introduced by irrelevant branches. 
current calculus solution solution symbolize the entire input and sim uh, and emulate all instructions that operate on these symbolized bytes. However, from the red square, we can see that not all branches are relevant to the target branch. So if we consider the branch R3 as our target branch to reach the vulnerable code, in particular, U1 and U2 are not important for the outcome of R3. Therefore, extra constraints are introduced. Besides, the loop in the green square introduces large amount of constraints which do not directly contribute to the target branch. We try some cock execution engines to run this branch, and for example, QSIM. Despite that QSIM uses a method called chaining, which is a form of slicing using uh, program dependency graphs, it cannot solve the target branch and falls into optimistic solving mode, which only solves the last branch. But there are some problems with uh, optimistic mode, which is that it will lead to invalid solutions. For example, we're solving the constraints for R3 using bytes 15 and 14. It may pick a value for bytes 15 that interferes with R2 and cause the program to not even reach R3. Clearly, a single constraint on the last branch is not sufficient. Unfortunately, the complete dependency chains for in full mode also leads to problems in the form of constraint bloat and is a completely high level overhead. So specifically, given an input and the target branch R3 that the father needs to flip, the relevant constraints are only those related to R2 and R3. Picking the right values for bytes 14 and 15 such that they satisfy both conditions is sufficient to flip the branch. In other words, using the full dependency graph may vastly overshoot the minimum number of constraints needed to flip in the branch. Um, so in uh, table 1, we show the constraints collected by different methods for the code in, uh, in the listing on the right side. Uh, for the target branch R3, clearly, QSIM tries to collect more constraints than LinSIM, while cannot solve the branch effectively. But LinSIM performs much better on both memory consumption and time efficiency. And then we will talk about the method we use in LinSIM in detail. So, um, how does LinSIM address the issue of constraint growth? We propose two techniques to augment content execution. So the first one is function level tracing to overcome challenge one, and the second one is tent assisted partial synchronization to overcome uh, challenge two. So uh, we will also talk about the high level design of LinSIM. It is shown in the right uh, figure. It consists of four main components: the father. Um, the tent and license engine, the branch selection part, and also the concurrent execution engine. So the whole process of hybrid fuzz is like this. So the main fuzzer returns a queue of inputs from which we randomly select one and run it as a tent and license tool, determine the tented bytes for every branch. And next, the branch selection module selects branches to flip. While well, the code execution engine uses the tent information and function level tracing to generate a minimal set of constraints corresponding to the selected branches. And finally, a SAT solver returns a solution satisfying these constraints, which is then used to generate new inputs. So let's go deeper into the function level tracing part. Um, for our purpose, we only focus on the file processing response and library functions. Achieving this goal requires two steps, and the first is to determine which file processing library functions to hook. Uh, without access to source code, our goal is to track syscalls that open and read and so on, and then determine which library function wrapping these system calls we need to symbolize. So for this purpose, we rely on the dynamic binary instrumentation framework to get the calling sequences from functions to syscalls, as shown in the two listings. And the second step is to summarize such functions to perform symbolization. So this is similar to the uh, approach adopted in Angular for providing 
Python wrappers for our library functions. And the distinction is that we don't uh, provide summaries of all known library functions, but only focus on the file processing oriented ones. And also, unlike Angular, we do not model the whole effect of a system call on the memory, but rather only focus on the tent flow propagation. For most of the functions, this is as simple as grabbing the address of a file buffer from argument registers and symbolizing all the bytes in the buffer. For instance, the fread wrapper can, in principle, orderly symbolize the bytes of the read buffer upon memory function return. And uh, another main technique of our method is tent assisted partial symbolization. Our key intuition is here. Um, in the coverage oriented hybrid fuzzy scenario, we are only interested in targeting conditional branches that depend on some bytes of the input. For the mentioned example, uh, as shown on the left, the branch at line 23 to be negated and reach the vulnerable code R3, we only need to focus on offsets 40 and 50 in the input affecting the branch, assuming previous constraints are satisfied. As a result, full input symbolization is unnecessary, and we introduce constraint bloat. So building on this intuition, LSIM only symbolizes the input bytes that affect the target branches, providing many complex and unnecessary constraints while returning the same context as full symbolization. So we used dynamic tech analysis to get the bytes that will influence specific target branch, as you can see in the right of this team. So next, we will talk about our implementation. Um, we show the simple approach is effective and can be implemented in a modular fashion on top of off-the-shelf binary analysis tools, in particular with only about 1,000 lines of code. Uh, we can implement simple uh, branch seed selection policies for hybrid fuzzy. Uh, so basically, we implement uh, this whole LSIM prototype in only 1,126 lines of code overall. And uh, you can see uh, we use a very small amount of lines of code to implement every part of LSIM. And next, we will talk about the evaluations of our work. To answer uh, in this section, we we'll try to evaluate our leasing method and answer these three questions. The first one is, does LSIM improve uh, valid input generation when compared to full data dependency based execution strategies like QSIM? The second one is, does LSIM incur more overhead in terms of memory consumption when compared to full data dependency based config strategies like QSIM? And the third one is, does LSIM improve hybrid fuzzing with limited time and computing resources? So to answer question one, we evaluate the cost of optimistic solving. Optimistic solving is the policy QSIM has used to mitigate the pro uh, problem of constant bloat, uh, which only solves uh, the last branch. And this often invalidates the previous constraints, thereby affecting coverage in unpredictable ways. In result, this method may generate invalid inputs, thereby taking the program into an error state and that is trivial error handling code. We analyzed two programs on a seed input to show this problem, as shown in table three and table four. Uh, QSIM generates more coverage, but also more error handling code than, than using. For example, when analyzing the PNG, QSIM without optimistic mode can only find 800 uh, lines of coverage, while NISIM can find more than 900 uh, lines of coverage. When any optimistic mode uh, method, QSIM can find more coverage as about 1000. However, most of the new coverage come from error handling code as 94 out of 134, which means the new generated inputs are invalid inputs that trigger those error handling code. On contrary, 
Axiom can find 520 more coverage than QC without optimistic solving, where only introduce seven new lines of every uh, error had been code. We also analyze uh, the cost of quadrant broad introduced by um, by tracking all branches. So solutions such as QCM try to solve all the branches found during execution of the target application, including those from dynamic libraries. However, targeting such libraries has little or no positive effect on the coverage on the main uh, application. So LCM, on the other hand, is application aware in the sense that it selects branches only from the main application. In order to measure the effect on uh, the code coverage and memory usage, we run a series of these variants on four applications and uh, take the PNG as an example. Uh, QCM takes two hours, 27 minutes, and 12 seconds on a single input, while well, LCM only takes uh, 11 minutes and 40, hundreds, uh, 40 seconds. So we also show the results that we uh, continue running LCM to keep solving other branches from the newly generated inputs for the remaining time. And the final rate completes with 19 rounds on execution and achieve better coverage than QCM. Uh, finally, in the same time span, LCM can produce 140 more code coverage than QCM. Another thing worth mentioning is that QSIM can use much more memory than LSIM, with about 5,000 megabytes at most, but LSIM consumes only 300 megabytes on in memory, and at most uh, about 1,000 megabytes. To answer question 2, we analyze the impact of uh, bloat on input size. So it's clearly that. Um, uh, if the uh, we measure memory overhead and execution time of QSIM, Triton, and LSIM of four programs from a uh, group of the test rate and uh, have input intensive computation, we choose three input sufficient sizes for this evaluation. So, this figure shows that at uh, the time and the memory consumption for QSIM, Triton, and LSIM. For growing input sizes, they work quickly and are only comparable for very short inputs. These are not isolated cases and may encounter many issues with input sizes during our experiments. So, uh, we, uh, one of the main design criteria of QSIM is to tackle the problem of over constraints, which may result in unsatisfiable constraints. In generating new inputs. LSIM's trend based constraint collection also needs to uh, aims to address the problem of over constraints. And in order to test the quality of collected constraints by LSIM and QSIM, we analyze a set of applications to empirically observe the number of asset branches in both of the approaches. We run these applications on seed inputs to record for how many branches the solver returns and set, thereby indicating uh, the feasibility of generating inputs that flip those branches. In case of asset, QCM falls back to optimistic mode to still generate inputs. We can also see in uh, this table that LCM returns asset branches at most 30% uh, of the times. Uh, well, QSIM returns asset at least uh, 30 uh, something percent, which shows that QSIM fails to solve more complex branches more often than LSIM, which could be a side effect of our constraints. So, this number shows the ability of the conflict execution engine to solve complex constraints if the problem of over constraints is addressed carefully, and LSIM is better at minimizing the problem of over constraints. And then we also uh, compare LCM's code execution approach to that of its Triton baseline. And uh, uh, basically, uh, LCM can be much faster in time efficiency and also uh, produces less uh, memory overhead. And uh, uh, you can see all the data in the table, and we are not going to 
uh, go deep deeply into the details of this part. Uh, we also uh, run a 24-hour test on the application uh, with hybrid funding uh, on four different methods: AFL only, Triton, and QSIM, and uh, our work LSIM. We run the applications for six times, uh, each for 24 hours, and compare the results on the geo means over these runs. So uh, in general, uh, our work LSIM can uh, increase coverage by more than 10% than Triton and 7% more than AFL and QSIM. And our work can also find the target vulnerability faster than AFL, QSIM, and Triton. We also find uh, five uh, new bugs, uh, 70 new bugs in five newer applications. And uh, eight of them are not found by QSIM, but only found by uh, NITSIM. You can find all the detailed data in our paper. So finally, uh, the takeaways. Uh, our work, LinSIM. Uh, in this paper, we presented our work, LinSIM, which is an efficient hybrid father based on constraint defloating. So in particular, LSIM focuses on two simple constraint defloating strategies, namely function level tracing and uh, uh, for system I.O. emulation and the tent assisted partial symbolization. Uh, more importantly, despite the simple branch and seed selection policies and the glue code for hybrid fuzzing implemented in only 1,000 lines of code. And also, LSIM outperforms state-of-the-art customized, uh, custom-optimized hybrid fuzzers and finds more bugs in real-world applications. But it, it can also be improved in some ways. Uh, for example, we have not empirically tested the effect of implementing implicit tent flows on performance in terms of uh, overhead and accuracy. And also, function level tracing involved menu, manually creating the summaries of relevant syscalls and the library functions. So this functionality can be enhanced further by adopting function summary approach of Angular, for example. And a further area of improvements comes from a more intelligent approach for input and branch selection. Overall, we believe our work, LSIM, provides a new hybrid fuzzy baseline that is practical, modular, and easily extensive way forward. So you can find uh, our paper uh, in this link. And uh, thanks to Fusek. Uh, this is uh, how this work can be done, finally. And thank you very much. Q&A.